Hey, praise the Lord, everybody. We're going to be getting started shortly, so giving everybody time to jump on. This is our live at 11.05 with KD Sanders. I'm so blessed for everybody that's going to be getting on, so I'm going to give everybody time to jump on for our word tonight. Uh, let's see, the time is 11.05, so we're going to get started at 11.08, about 11.08, because I know a lot of people text me and said they're going to be jumping on. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Pam. Always good to see you. Amen. We're going to start a little family thing going on here. Amen. So this is our live at 11.05. Amen. So I'm giving it, I usually give everybody about three minutes to jump on. Amen. God bless you, Kathy. Pam and Kathy, you all, you two are always the first one to jump on. Praise God for you. I'm at the sow a seed into both of y'all um, for your support. You don't hear that too often. Usually the person doing it asks for a seed, but I want to sow a seed into you all. So prepare for that. Prepare for that. All right, so I'm going to give everybody a few minutes to jump on, and then we're going to get started. It's 11.05, so at 11.08, amen. But as you prepare, um, have your Bibles ready. Um, God bless you, Keith. God bless you, Keith. Keith Day, amen. So glad that you're on. I did get your message about the video, and um, I'm making some changes to that right now, so I'll get back with you, Keith. God bless you. All right, so at 11.08, people, we're going to get started. About 11.08, 11.09. 11.09 on dot. We'll get started with the word. That won't be as long. Amen, because I definitely respect your time at a late hour. Amen. So give everybody time to jump on. For those that jump on, let me know who you are. Let me know where you are and all that good stuff um, so I can make sure that I recognize you and acknowledge you uh, for tonight. All right, so this is our Live at 5. We're going to be getting started in about three minutes. Amen. So we're going to start in about two minutes. Our live at 11.05. Amen. We're going to start in about two minutes. I'm getting everybody time to jump on. Um, I know some people sent me some messages, said that they definitely want to be on. They don't want to miss it. Um, so I'm giving people time to jump on. So at 11.09 on the dot, we're going to get started. Uh, but until then, I want to say God bless each and every one of you. Love you. And I thank you for your support of this ministry. Uh, just your prayers and your support. As we are in day number three, and um, I don't know if you all been keeping up, but our videos, these videos have already reached over 300 people. God is awesome. Over 300 people in 24 hours. So that's a blessing. Amen. That's a blessing to be able to sow into the lives of others. Those who have been sharing the videos, thank you so much. Um, that is not for me to get glory, but that God gets the glory for the gospel to be spread. That's what it's all about. It's not for popularity. Uh, it's not for pedestal. It is all that God may get the glory. I'm just being obedient to what God has done. And the Lord is blessing me for the obedience. Amen. All right. So 1108. So in one minute, we're going to get started. But for those that want to prepare, um, if you look at my Facebook, we're going to be going to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. We're going to be looking at verse one. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse one. I'm going to give about one more minute. We're going to get started. All right. All right. So as promised, it is 1109. It is 1109. It is 1109. 
All right, so let me turn the music down. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you for watching live at 11.05. Amen. God bless each and every one of you. God bless you, Rufus. Amen. Went to high school with Rufus Sims. He is doing some amazing things um, in Detroit. I'll be able to keep up with you, Rufus, on Facebook. Amen. Um, it is amazing to see people that you went to school with and just see how God is working in their lives. Amen. So God bless you, Brother Sims, uh, for what you're doing in the city of Detroit. Amen. Make sure you all connect with him. Uh, great brother. Great brother doing amazing things. So God bless you. All right. So people, we are, it's 1109. So here we are with 11, uh, 11 reasons, amen, that we're going to be sharing in the next course of weeks of why God is just doing great things in your life. And you know, some people say, well, why are you doing it at 1105? You know, it's a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice, amen. You know, many of you work. I work too. And about around this time, you know, you probably knocked out in the bed. It is a sacrifice. But you know what? When you're consistent in what God wants you to do and when you're consistent, um, you know, for much is given, much is required. And already in the third day, God has begun to bless me for this ministry that has started, amen, these 15, 20 minutes of word and inspiration, amen, for each and every one of you, amen. Like I said, 300 people, about 300 people have been reached in these videos, and I, I can't believe it. I did not expect it to get to this number, amen, just a brief word at night that's going to reach people and help people. God bless you, Jan. Amen. Wow. Good friend of mine down in, oh, I don't know if you're still in Ypsilanti. I went to school with Jim. Amen. And Sister Hall, I call her Sister Hall. Deacon S. Hall. She'll get mad at me for saying that. God bless you. I'm so happy that you're on. Uh, good friend of mine from Eastern Michigan University. We used to sit in class together. Amen. So blessed that you're able to jump on tonight um, and tell your mother I said hello. Amen. Your family. God bless each and every one of you. All right. So everybody, thank you. We're going to go ahead and get started. So this is our Katie's Inspire. Amen. For those that's been watching the videos that I used to make, it's Katie's Inspired Media. And so God put on my heart about two days ago to do a quick video called Live at 1105. And it was supposed to be just a one-time thing. And that one-time event or moment turned out to be, this, now we're on our third night because emails have been coming in and text messages just saying, you know, is there a word or can you just share a brief word? And Amen. God has been able to bless that. We talked about consistency. Amen. God bless you, Angel. Amen. Angel was able to stay up. She said, if I'm up, I'll be able to jump on. So God bless you, Angel. I'm glad that you jumped on tonight. Amen. So we've been talking about consistency and you all watch this. You all are helping me with my consistency, amen? At a late hour, at 11.05 at night on a weeknight, here I am still, after working, traveling, and ministry engagements, here I am still, 11, I could not wait till 11.05, because you all have become my family. You all have become my family, amen? And I love each and every one of you, so thank you. Thank you for your support, and thank you for your encouragement. So, with that said, turn in your Bibles to Hebrews 11.1. Because you didn't come to hear from me. You came to hear from God. Amen. Amen. So turn to Hebrews 11. 1. Let me give, let me give, let me give a shout out to Bishop James Williams. Amen. Bishop James Williams at Spirit and Truth Ministries Church in Detroit. Um, I had an opportunity to go to his Thursday evening service. And I'm telling you, it was powerful. Powerful. I can't remember the um, woman of God's name. Um, Apostle Chappelle, I believe. Apostle Chappelle. What a powerful word. And she talked about transitions. She talked about transitions. It came from the book of Jeremiah and how we are in the season of transition. God is changing, shifting some things. He's shifting some things in our minds and our lives. Amen. And what a powerful word she gave to remind us of the power of transition. Okay. And I want you to keep that in your spirit today. Whatever's going on in your life, and this is not my message today, but whatever is going on in your life, wherever you are, Amen. God is shifting some things. He's shifting relationships. He's shifting um, your, your way of thinking. He's, shi he's shifting your praise walk. He's shifting your faithfulness. Amen. Everything that you're doing, there's a shift taking place because there's an assignment that God has given us to do. And in that assignment, there are some things that's going to have to be moved out the way. There are some people that's going to have to go. There are some people that's going to stay. There's going to be a lot of shifting that's going to be taking place in this season. So the woman of God tonight is Spirit and Truth in Detroit gave a powerful word, and I thank God for her and her obedience. Amen. So with that said, Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Amen. And as you already know, I always say, if one person say I got it, then I know you have it because I don't ever want you to think that I'm making this stuff up. Amen. The word of God is what we need. So if one person can let me know that you got it. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. 
One person can let me know you got it and we'll move forward. Amen. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. I want you to see this scripture for yourself. Amen. So you say, well, he's making that stuff up on top of the head. Thank you, Pam. All right. Pam says she got it. All right. I'm sure some more people will have it. So Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. We're going to read that. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Now faith. Amen. God bless you, Raven. God bless you, Keith. Amen. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. I'm going to read it again. God bless you, Kathy. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. I'm going to read it one more time. Now faith, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for tonight. In this brief moment of sharing the word, I ask that you bless your people. Open up their ears and open up their minds, oh God, and speak to their spirits tonight. I pray that you set Kevin aside, oh God, for they did not come to hear me, God. They came to hear you. So I pray that you use me as your vessel tonight as we look at this scripture, as we talk about faith tonight. Lord, speak in a mighty way tonight, for it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. God bless you. So we're talking about now faith, all right? This is a, a, a popular scripture that many people have quote on a regular basis, but if you break that scripture down, there are some things that I want you all to see. I'm going to show you what God gave me. The first word is now, currently, present, okay? Right now. A lot of times we talk about what God did back then. We talk about what God did five years ago. There's a song that says, down through the years, God has been good to me. Down through the years. Well, I mean, that's a good song, and I respect that. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Lord. But let me tell you something. I can't stay stuck on down through the years. Right now. We are in a now place, all right? I'm sure some of you are dealing with a right now season. Some of you are in a right now place. Some of you are dealing with a right now situation and you need a right now God. Amen. Some people say you shouldn't say um, that, you know, there's another song that says he may not come when you want him, but he's always right on time. And, you know, great song. But scripture says that I am a present help. Uh Oh, I am a present help in the time of trouble. I am a present help. Present means right now in your time of trouble. So he comes when you want him, amen. But your faith has to match up because really the Lord says, I would never leave you, neither would I forsake you. So the Lord is right there. He's still there. The Lord didn't leave, okay? So we got to be careful. Sometimes we listen to these songs and we get so into them. But you know what? What does the word say? Now, I know some people are going to get mad at me because that's probably their favorite song. But the word of God tells us something different. OK, uh, he does come when I want to. Every time I've called on him, he has come right on time. Amen. So present help. He is a present help. He says, I will never leave you. Neither will I forsake you. That means that right where you're sitting right now, as you're watching this video, the Lord is with you in your home, at your job, in your dorm room. If, for Raven that's watching. Amen. The Lord says that I am right there. He says, I am the God of right now. Amen. God bless you, Keith. I am the God of right now. Um, God, the Lord told Moses. And Moses said, well, Lord, who do I say sent me? And, he, and the Lord says, I am that I am. And that's it. I am that I am. I am your help. I am your provider. I am your comforter. I am your present help in your time of trouble. I am. So the I am has not left us. Amen. So when you need him, the word of God says to open up your mouth. And when you call upon the name of the Lord, he inclines his ear down to his people. Amen. So don't ever feel that you're in a place where the Lord is forcing you to sit in a, in a destructive state and he's going to come when he wants to come. That's not what the word says. That's not what the word says. He says, I am a present help. I am not going to sit and watch you be destroyed. I'm not going to sit and watch you struggle. I'm not going to sit and watch you sit in tears and just sit. I, the, Lord said, the Lord says, I don't enjoy watching you in a bad state. I don't get a kick out of watching you struggle. The Lord says that when you call on my name, don't go by what the song says. Don't go by what tradition says. He says, when you call on me, I'm right there. 
I'm a present help, meaning I'm there for you. But you got to take the step and you got to call out. Sometimes we try to handle situations on our own and we try to come up with our own solutions. I remember um, with my finances, I used to sit with a, with a piece of paper and I used to write, write, write everything. OK, I got this much money. OK, I want to do this. Now I want to do this and then I want to do this, but I don't have enough money for that. I want to go here, but I don't have enough money. And I used to have this paper full of stuff and nowhere in that paper did I say, Father, I'm asking that you be the provider. Lord, I'm asking that you supply the needs. I'm asking that you fulfill the financial voids. Nowhere on that paper did I say that. So I'm struggling looking at this paper and I'm not thinking about the book, the word of God. So the word of God talks about faith. Now, faith. Circle that in, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Right now, now faith, present help. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, okay? Now, watch this. Now, this, this really tripped me out when I read this. Faith is, um, if you look at the scripture, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things that I cannot see. If God has placed it in your spirit to see it in the spirit, he's preparing you to see it in the physical. What do I mean by that? The Lord being the almighty God, the all-seeing, the all-knowing God, he would not put it in your spirit unless he's getting ready for you to see it in the physical. I'm going to say that one more time. If God allows you to see something in your spirit, whether it be through dreams, whether it be through um, through your prayers, whether it be just, you know, I was just sitting and the Lord showed me some things. He showed me where I'm going. He showed me some things that's going to happen in my life. He showed me a vision. I mean, when the word of God says that without a vision, the people shall perish. So if you are walking, if you are walking brother or sister with vision, don't be scared. But that's a beautiful thing because God is speaking to you. The Lord never stops speaking. So if God allows you to see something in the spirit, as soon as you see whatever you see in the spirit, you better start praying and you pray and ask God for revelation. You ask God to give you word. You ask God to give you guidance. Lord, what is it that you're showing me? And whatever it is you're showing me, can you direct me on how to get to that vision? OK, so whatever God. So if you have a God bless you, Devon. Amen. Hey, Devian. Amen. God bless you, brother. Down from Second Baptist Ypsilanti. I love you, man. All right. So whatever God shows you. If you're watching this video and there's something that God has placed in your mind, amen, in your spirit, and you see yourself doing something, I want you to catch this. This is where faith comes in that. If you can see it in the spirit, God is going to prepare you to see it in the physical. I'm going to say it one more time because I need somebody to get this. If you can see it in the spirit, then God is going to prepare you to see it in the physical. The all-knowing, the all-seeing God that knows you from your head to your toes. He would not drop something in your spirit unless it's something that's getting ready to happen in the physical. Okay? All right. All right. So there are some people on this video, God has given you visions. You have a vision to start a business. You have a vision to travel. You have a vision to start an organization. You have a vision to be worldwide and do great things. Amen. That's not just for you to just sit and say, oh, well, uh, one day. No, it's not one day. God getting ready to start that thing in you right now. Amen. Now faith is the substance right now. This is the season that God is saying, I'm getting you started on what you've been praying for. Amen. But first, before he does that, you have to have a level of expectation. There has to be something. Now, I do not. Now, watch this. I'm be real. I cannot be around people that say it is what it is. I ask them how they doing. I'm just taking it one day at a time. I don't want to hear that. Okay. Can I throw that out there? I don't want to hear. I'm taking it one day at a time. Uh, another thing I don't want to hear. I ask somebody, how you doing? I can't complain. Whoa. Yeah, you really do want to complain, but you just stop. Amen. You say you really can complain, but something's stopping you. I don't know. It's stuff that we say. Then I don't think we know what we're saying, because when you say I can't complain, you say I really want to, but I don't know what you're going to think about me after I start complaining. That's what you're really saying. <laughs> if you said I'm just taking it one day at a time, you said you're not saying that this is the day that the Lord has made and I shall rejoice and be glad. And you said that this is a rough day and I'm just going to see what happens the next day. That's not the God that we serve. But when you walk in faith, you say that everything that I'm experiencing every single day, God is preparing me for what he's dropped in my spirit. 
Amen. Wherever there's a vision, there is provision. Watch this. Wherever there's a vision, there is provision. So if God has put it in your spirit and he's allowed you to see it in the spirit, then he's going to give you the provision, the, the things that you need to fulfill the vision. OK, but now you just got to be obedient and following the guidelines of what he has, what he wants you to do. So let's look at this. Now, faith is now what I can't see is the realization of what I am about to see. Watch this. Now, what I cannot see is the realization of what I am getting ready to see. All right. Let me just be real with you. I told you about my car that I have right now. I remember in the month of June when the car, my car former car, uh, previous car started to act up. In the month of July, it was getting worse. And I envisioned the kind of car that I wanted. I just saw it. I don't know if you ever just watched something and said, you know what? I see myself driving that. I see myself driving that. So as my car was breaking down and as my car was going through stuff in the month of July, I said, you know what? I see myself driving something better. And I, the car that was in my spirit, I saw it. OK. And as the more I saw the car, you know, the Lord wouldn't drop it in my spirit unless he said, Kevin, this is what you're going to get. So when I went to that dealership, I had no business going to cars that he did not show me. Uh oh, I want you to catch this. In the month of July, God showed me the car that he wanted me to have. He showed me the car that I that, that I, I could see myself driving, but because of my lack of faith at that present time, I went to a whole different car because I didn't think I could afford the car. I didn't think the car was right for me. I didn't think that I'd be able to handle the payments. I had all these excuses. Instead of going to what God had for me, I settled for less. Amen. God bless you, Jennifer Dooley. Amen. Call those things that are not as if so as if though they were. Amen. You are right about that. So I told my friends and I said, you know what? That car that I that you saw in that commercial, that's my car. They said, Kevin, what? You don't make that kind of money. You can't get that. I said, that's my car. I said, I see myself in it. I see myself driving. It's dependable. It's a good travel car. I kept saying that. And every day I kept speaking. That's my car. That's my car. So when I went to the dealership. Every time I went to the dealership, the next few times I went to the car that God showed me when I went the day that I got the, went to sign the papers. I looked at that car and, and, and as, as he was showing me the different cars, he said, well, what car have you been looking at? And the car that I was looking at, I, it was in the showroom. And, you know, the cars that oh, my God, I feel something. The cars that are in the showroom are the cars that everybody kind of look at and say, man, I wish I could have that. I want you to catch this. The salesperson desk was right next to the car that was in a showroom. And I kept staring at that car. I said, I, I want that. I said, that's the car I've been looking at. That's the car I see myself driving. And when he said, Kevin, what kind of car have you been looking at? I could have pointed out in that parking lot to a car that I know I didn't need and a car that I knew I didn't see myself in. So I immediately, by faith, I said, that's my car right there. He looked at me and said, what? I said, that's my car right there. That's the car that I see myself in. And you know what? It is a blessing to be connected to the man and woman of God because it just so happened that the salesperson is a is a pastor, a preacher. Amen. And so immediately he began to minister to me and he says, where is your faith? Woo. He said, where is your faith? Because when he threw the numbers out in the air, I said, uh oh. But he said, but man of God, where is your faith? So here goes somebody convicted me on my faith that I preach about. And would you believe that in a matter of seven days, in a seven, in a matter of seven days, the car that I was looking at in the showroom was the car that I was driving and the car that I'm driving right now. Amen. God said, this is the season. God bless you, Iris. Amen. Amen. I, yeah, I do remember sharing that praise report with you. God says in this season, in this season, amen, don't just talk about it. Don't just vision it, envision it, but it's time to walk into what God has shown you. God says, this season, I'm going to do greater. I'm sending your name. He says, I'm going to make your name great. Amen. If you are doing my will, if you are being obedient to my spirit, if you are um, performing the things that I've asked you to do, God says that you are going to be able, he says, I am going to blow your mind with the places that I'm going to take you. I'm going to blow your 
your mind with the places that you're going to travel to. Amen. There's somebody on this video that God says that it's time to pack your bags. Amen. Because you're getting ready to do some travel. Amen. God says in the place that you're in, sometimes we stay within the box. Amen. But God's ministry is so much larger. God's ministry is so much larger. God's ministry is so much larger. So whatever city that you're in, don't get too comfortable and stay right there. But God says, I'm enlarging your territory. I am enlarging your territory. Finances will not be an excuse. Stop worrying about how much money you have. God says, I'm going to give you provision for your vision. So if your vision is to travel the country, God says, if that's your vision and you are doing it for my glory, I am going to give you what you need. I'm going to have strangers come and sow into your bosom. I'm going to have people come to you and say, God told me to give you this. Amen. And you're going to be shouting saying, how did you know? But the word of God says that what you do in secret. God will reward you openly. Amen. What you do in secret, God will reward you openly. So in your prayer closet, there's been some people on this video that by faith, you've been trusting God for some opportunities. You've been trusting God for some opening doors. You've been trusting God for some job situations. You've been trusting God. If you pray to God in secret, God says that I will reward you openly. Amen. There's going to be some strangers that are going to come to you and say, God told me to sow this into you. God, told me to bless you with this. And you're going to say, Lord, I love you and I bless you because only God can send your provision. God says, do not look for man to provide for you because man will let you down. But your provision comes from God. God says, you've been faithful in what I've asked you to do. You've been faithful in your calling. You've been faithful in your ministry. You've loved people even when they didn't love you. You've embraced people even when they didn't embrace you. People that talked about you, people that hurt you, people that stabbed you in the back when you could have retaliated, you embraced him and said, I still love you. And God said, because of your faithfulness, everything that you asked for, and even things that you did not ask for, God says, I'm getting ready to open up doors for you. I need you to go through your house tonight and start knocking on some doors. That's what the spirit of God is telling me right now, that your blessing is behind a door. I don't know what door it is, but there's something happening behind a door. Go through your house. Amen. There's somebody in your house that you have at least seven doors in your house. Seven is the number of completion. Amen. As you go through your house, amen, I want you to knock on the door because that knock that you're hearing is God saying that I am knocking on your door. That's why hell is breaking loose in your life. That's why things are shaking in your life. That's why your body is going through what it's going through. That's why your mind is going through things. Amen. You say that it's an attack of the enemy, but that's God getting ready to say that I'm getting ready to answer your prayers. Amen. This is the season where the Lord said that I've heard your prayers. I've seen your tears. Hallelujah. I've heard your cries. I've seen how people have treated you, but because you stood still and you listened to my voice, get ready, get ready, get ready. God says, I am getting ready to blow your mind. The things that you have asked for in your secret closet, I'm getting ready to reward you openly. My God. My God, my God, my God. I didn't even plan on going there tonight. I did not plan on going there tonight, but I feel the spirit of God moving on this video. There's been some people that you are at the edge of what you've been asking God for. I don't know why God keeps showing me businesses and organizations. He's been showing me that all this week. There have been some people that have lost business and they've lost organizations because they did not do it to the glory of God. There has been some people that did not, that have lost their favor with God, amen, because God has blessed them and they didn't use what God gave them, amen. So guess what? What God, amen, what God had stored up for them, they missed it, amen. So now God has said, can I find somebody who's obedient? Can I find somebody who's obedient to do what I've asked you to do? And I want you, if you're watching this video, you better stop letting money be your excuse. God is greater than money. God says the, the opportunities that I'm going to give you, money won't have anything to do with you. Favor. And stop saying that favor is not fair. Favor is fair. Favor is given to anybody who's walking in the obedience of God. Stop using that cliche that favor is not fair. It is fair. And it's available to anybody who's walking in obedience, who's walking in faith. Amen. It doesn't matter what your past is. And let me let me tap on that right quick, because there are some people that say that I used to struggle with drinking. I used to struggle with sex. I used to struggle with smoking weed, whatever the case may be. God can use anybody to show his glory. 
Did you catch that? I hope a preacher is watching that right now. God will use anybody with any background to show everybody his glory. God does not pick the person that's polished. God does not pick the person that can quote a thousand scriptures. God is not picking the person that speak a thousand tongues. God is not picking somebody who wears a suit every day and you ask him how they doing. I'm blessed and highly favored. No, God is picking those people that say, I know I got some struggles. I know I got some dirt on my life. I know I got some issues, but I know that God is real and God loves me and I'm pushing every day to get closer to him. Those are the people that God says, you know what? You real. You are real. You ain't got to know every scripture in the Bible. Amen. You ain't got to know all the spiritual stuff. God says just walk in obedience. Because obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen. So when you walk in obedience and do what God has asked you to do, this year is going to be the beginning of some amazing things that's going to turn in your life. All right. I'm getting ready to close this. Amen. I'm getting ready to close this. Hebrews chapter 11, verse one. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things that I cannot see. Watch this. In order to prove a case right, there has to be evidence. Sister Iris is on the line. If Iris, <laughs> Iris knows the whole court systems. I'm sure she can attest to this. In order to know, oh my God, I feel the Holy Spirit on this. Now faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things that's not seen. There are some people that say, I can't see your God. I can't see your vision. I can't see what you're talking about. The evidence is, well, you keep on looking because God has done amazing things in my life that I am the walking evidence of the thing that you cannot see. Wow, wow, wow. I am the walking evidence of what you cannot see. You cannot see my past. You cannot see what I went through to get to this point. You cannot see my days and nights of tears. You cannot see my struggles before this moment. And because you cannot see that, what you can see is a man or woman of God that's been walking by faith and trusting God. I am the evidence. You are the evidence. We are the evidence of what others cannot see. Faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things that we cannot see. But you know what? I'm going to be able to take this video a whole different direction. I'm getting ready to wrap this up because this thing is getting rich. I close this by saying this, brothers and sisters. Don't speak faith if you're not going to walk in faith. Stop limiting God. Okay? Stop placing limits on God. Let me tell you my personal area of faith. I spoke to God and I said, Lord, I see you putting me on. I see. I saw myself driving to airports. I see myself boarding planes. I see myself traveling to different states. I see myself speaking not in small buildings. I see myself speaking in stadiums. Watch this. I see myself speaking in stadiums with thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people. I see myself speaking on national networks to thousands and thousands of people sharing what I love to do. Speak the word of God and by faith in what God can do. I see myself stepping out of the city of Pontiac for those that's in Pontiac. I see myself larger going further than Pontiac, going larger than Michigan, going larger than the United States. I see myself in South Africa. I see myself in Europe. I see myself in China. I see myself in Korea. Yes. You don't have to be the president to travel to unknown places. Amen. But God is saying that in this season, if you see it, if you see it with your spirit, God is going to reveal it in the physical. If you see it in the spirit, God is going to reveal it in the physical. If you see it in the spirit, God is going to reveal it in the physical. Now, that's my vision. That's what I see. My question to you tonight as we close this is what are you seeing? As we get ready for our prayer request tonight, I want to ask you, what is God showing you? What do you see by faith? What have you been praying for? What is something in your secret closet that you've been trusting God for? What is something? Where is a place that you see yourself going? What do you see getting ready to happen? What doors do you see opening up? Whatever God has shown you in the spirit, he's getting ready to do it in the physical. And let me, let me throw this at you. It's not going to take a long time. How do you know that, Kevin? 
Because the word of God says that yesterday is gone and says tomorrow is not even promised. So it does not take God a long time. You don't have to claim something. We're in 2017. I'm not asking God to do something in 2018. I'm not asking God to do something in 2020. I'm asking God to do something right now. Today is uh, January the uh, 12th. For people that's watching on the 12th, I'm asking God to do something on the 12th. Yep, same day. Why? Because scripture says now. Woo! Now faith. Right now, God, I'm asking you to move now. I'm asking you to heal some people on this video right now. I'm asking you to open up some doors of opportunity now. I'm asking you to send the right people in the path of the people that's walking in vision right now. I'm asking you to open up doors of, of new businesses right now. I'm asking you to spread enlarged ministries now. I'm asking you to deliver some addictions out of family members right now. I'm asking you to increase the prayer life of some people now. I'm asking you to increase the careers. There's some people on here with careers. I'm asking you to enhance it right now. I'm asking you to help somebody to with, with um, condemning themselves. I'm asking that you give hope and give integrity and give dignity right now. I'm asking that you elevate the person's mind right now. I'm asking you that you deliver somebody from depression right now. I'm asking that you destroy suicidal thoughts right now. I'm asking that you help our young ladies to understand that they are treasures and they're not trash right now. I'm asking that you help our young men to understand that they are not thugs, that they will not end up in prisons, but they will end up in a university and they will own their own corporation right now. I'm asking that you touch mothers of children and that you give them the encouragement that they need, that even though they're raising these kids, oh God, that you give them the strength to raise them with integrity by the word of God right now. I'm asking that you touch the school system and amen that you go into classrooms and to hallways i'm asking that you build up our schools not only in pontiac but you build up the schools in the nation and that you bring the spirit of god back into the school system right now i'm asking that you go into hospitals those who are on their deathbed those who have multiple medications on them right now i'm asking that you heal them i'm asking oh god that you go into churches here we go i'm asking that you go into churches today Dead churches. Yep, I'm calling it out. I'm asking that you go into dead churches and that you humble them, that they may receive your spirit right now. I'm asking that you decrease them from doing it man's way and that you let them know that the only way that they're going to survive is by doing it by the word of God, God's way. I'm, I'm, I'm asking that you turn churches around. That people don't have to go to a video every day, but God, the same word they're getting here is the same word they get on Sunday morning. I'm asking for a revival of the churches right now. I'm asking that you remove traditionalism, remove barriers, remove walls. Let young people go into churches and lift up their hands and praise like they like to praise, like they want to praise. Because that's their relationship with God. Let it happen right now. 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 Our young people, my God, our young people are not going to church because they're being judged. They're being condemned. Amen. Who cares if they pants are sagging? Who cares if the girl's shirt, short, um, skirt is too short? Who cares if the brother smelling like weed? Who cares if the homeless man is dirty? If they step into the doors of the church right now, we need to pray for them. We need to encourage them because the hospital, the, the church is a spiritual hospital. Right now, tear down the walls of traditionalism inside the church. Tear down the religious spirit inside the church and bring back the spirit of God so that we may be able to worship and praise together right now. Right now. What is your prayer today? As we close this video, I'm going to take prayer requests as I do at the end of every video. I love each and every one of you all, and I thank you all so much for your prayers, amen. As you see, God took this a whole different direction, amen. God took this a whole different direction. The past two nights, this video, these videos have been watched about 250 times, amen. The emails that have been coming through have been amazing of how God has already helped some people, amen, just by faith. It's not by my doing, but I trust God. You better connect with people that know who God is, Amen. You better. I don't want people to say, I'll pray for you. No, pray for me right now because I'm in a right now season. Those are the kind of people that you need. Prayer requests. Amen. Before we close, as you already know, when I finish these videos, I go into my prayer closet for about 20 minutes and I pray for everything on the list. Whatever you put on the list, that's what I go into my prayer closet and I pray for and I pray for you. That's called intercession. 
I'm intercessing for you. I'm going before the Father, and I'm not praying just by myself, but I'm touching and agreeing with you. Amen. Devion. Devion Lynch. God bless you. Praying for the Lynch family, Thomas family, Washington. Okay, so um, Devion, Devion Lynch, I'm praying for you. God bless you, brother. I'm so proud of you, man. Um, you, he was he was one of my youth at Second Baptist in Ypsilanti. Amen. One of Sister Iris youth, too. All right, Devian, I'm praying for your family. Amen. I'm writing that down. Before we close this video, I'm taking prayer requests. I'm taking prayer requests. Amen. Devian Lynch, we're praying for your family. Is there anybody else on here that got a prayer request, something that you trust in God for? Amen. As we talk about now, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Is there anybody here? Okay, Pam, healing for my son, Michael. All right, Pam, healing for my son, Michael. Okay. Uh, amen. Amen. Pain and Jana and Jana. Amen. To get a kidney transplant plant. Um, Jana to get a kidney transplant. My God, my God, my God. Amen. If you're a prayer warrior on here, I want you to make sure you hear these prayer requests, too, and uh, make sure you pray as well. So Devion Lynch, we're praying for his family. We're praying for restoration in his family. We're praying for healing of his family. For Pam, we're praying, praying for her son, Michael. And we're praying for Jana. Amen. For a kidney transplant. We're praying for a kidney transplant for Jenna. Amen. That's two. Do we have any more before we cl before we close out in prayer? Do we have any more prayer requests? Amen. Catherine. Amen. Uh, Carisha Hill. We're praying for obedience. Amen. Carisha Hill. Amen. Kathy, let Carisha know that I've been praying for her for the prayer request on yesterday. Okay. All right. Carisha Hill. Obedience. Amen. All right. Amen. God bless you. So we got Devion. Amen. Sister Iris. Amen. Pray for her. Yes, yes, yes. Um, Iris, you all, is a good friend of mine. One of my good mentors. Amen. She's saying pray for... We need to pray for our country. We do need to pray for our country. Um, if you notice, there's a lot of stuff going on. And I'm not going to go get into the politics. Amen. But there's a lot of stuff going on. And we need to pray for the transition in this country. Um, let's see. Let me go back down because I don't want to miss these. Angel. I'm sorry, sorry, Kathy, I got yours. Um, Carisha, he'll pray for obedience, stronger faith. Okay, amen. Angel, we're praying for a new job. Hallelujah, God is a provider. We're praying for that. We're praying for that, amen. We're praying for that immediately. Step out on faith, and God is going to open up. The job is already there. You just got to walk into it, okay? Amen. Linda Dudley, wow, God bless you, Linda Dudley. My good friend, amen, God bless you, Linda, and we're praying for sinus infection, okay, Linda, I am adding that to my list right now, all right, sinus infection, God bless you, Linda, uh, we're going to be praying for that tonight, amen, so don't, don't leave yet, we're going to touch and agree with that, amen, uh, Raven, applying to be an RA, amen, amen, next year, so prayers for the application process, and the Raven, I believe that you already have it because God has already qualified you. Amen. God has already qualified you to be a resident assistant. Amen. At, at your school. And let me share something with you. If that door did not open up, it's because God has a larger door for you because of your obedience. You stay on top of your grades in school. You stay on top of your grades in school. Watch your company. Watch your circle. Watch your crowds. You keep walking in the integrity of God. Then every door that God has for you is beyond the application. But by faith, if that's what you want, God says, I will give you the desires of your heart. If that's what you want to see God do, I'm touching the green for you for, to be an RA. Amen. Uh, for Pam, my daughter Ashley, anger issues. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I'm praying for that, Pam. We're praying for Ashley for anger issues. All right. All right. Amen. Amen. Uh, Kathy, Tammy Jones lost her father. My God. All right. Uh, Tammy Jones. All right. We're going to be praying for that family and we're going to be praying that God covers them and comforts them during this time. During this time, nobody likes to deal with a loss. A loss is always a difficult thing to deal with. It's a hard season to deal with. Amen. So we're going to be praying for that. Amen. Thank you, Kathy, um, for putting that. Linda, Lin, um, Linda, amen, Barnes, increase of faith. Yes, yes, yes. I'm so glad that you're on here, Linda. All right. Uh, let me put that on here. Increase of faith. All right. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Do we have any more? Uh, Catherine, right now, faith. I'm with you on that. Amen. Uh, uh, all right. Kim Allen, strength and direction. Okay. Kim Allen, strength and direction. 
All right. Is there anybody else? We got about, uh, wow, about 13 requests. Amen. Let me tell you what I do. We touch and agree. So when I start praying tonight, I want you to touch and agree with me. Now you say, what does touch and agree mean? What it means is that I am, I am not just praying for your situation, but I'm touching and agreeing with what you're praying. Sometimes we depend on somebody to pray for us, but I'm not going to pray for you. I'm going to pray with you. Uh, hallelujah. Because this is a request that you have. So as you're praying, I'm going to be touching and agreeing with what you're praying for. And we're going to come together. All right. Linda is asking for more patience. All right. Amen. I know there's some people on this video that have been there. Linda, you are not by yourself. Amen. The word of God tells us to be anxious for nothing. Don't be in a rush. All right. When you're in a rush, you bump into things that you shouldn't bump into. God says, do not be anxious for anything. Do not be anxious for anything. The Lord teaches us how to be still. And that's what Linda, God is showing me right now. God is telling me for you, be still in your mind and be still in your spirit. I don't know what the circumstance is. I don't know what the season is. But I believe that every time God tries to move, you move. Every time God tries to enter in, you move. And the Lord says in this season, there's going to be some moments where he's going to speak to you. And in his speaking to you, you got to be still. Because there's something that God is getting ready to say to you that's going to answer a prayer that you've been praying for quite some time. There's a revelation that God wants to give you. But he says in that patience, you got to be still. Amen. So God bless you, Linda. Amen. And I'm going to be praying for you on that. OK. All right. So we're getting ready to close. Um, what I want you to do in your own, wherever you are, whether you're at your home or your job, um, we're going to get ready to pray. And the way the way that I like to pray, I like to pray with you. I like to pray with you. I like to touch and agree with you and that we trust God and believe God together. OK, so we always enter in God. We always enter in with a praise and we thank God for what he's done. Whenever you go into prayer, don't just jump in and just start praying. Whenever you go into prayer, you start thanking God. It says to enter in with praise and thanksgiving. One of the mistakes that we make when we pray, we just start praying. You enter in. You don't just go in somebody's house. You don't just walk in somebody's house, but you knock on the door and you walk in. As you walk in, you greet. You greet them. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Hello. You never walk into somebody's house without greeting them. Well, guess what? In prayer, as you enter into the throne room, you greet the one that's in the throne room. My God, did you? We're going to talk about that in one of our studies. So we're going to enter into prayer, praising God and worshiping God. We're going to make our requests known and we're going to leave out praising and worshiping God. Can we do that tonight? Amen. Let's do this together. Father, we love you. Father, we bless you. You are an awesome God and we thank you for all that you have done. We give you glory and praise, O oh God. We magnify your name, and there is nobody like you. We thank you for being the God that heals us, delivers us. We thank you for, Lord, watching over our lives. We thank you for being with us each and every day. We thank you for even getting us through the storms of today. We thank you for, Lord, touching our minds and putting it in the right place. We thank you, O oh God, for protecting us. So much could have happened to us today, but God, you built a hedge around us. And we were safe in your arms. Lord, we say thank you. As we go into a prayer, oh God, we are asking, oh God, together, that you honor the request on this paper. On this paper, we have sinus infections. On this paper, we have someone that needs a kidney transplant. On this paper, we have somebody that's dealing with anger issues. On this paper, we got somebody that needs a new job. Yes, God. On this paper, we need we have somebody that's dealing with patience issues, learning how to work with patience. Lord, we have somebody on this paper that's dealt with a loss in the family. Yes. We got somebody on this paper that says, Lord, I need you to show me to uh, uh, show me clarity. Somebody who's asking for vision, somebody who's asking for forgiveness. Father, I am asking for every request on this paper and even those that were not on this paper. I am asking that you touch oh God, touch them where they are. I am asking by their faith that's inside of them that every request that is made known, if it lines up with your will, let it be done in your timing, O oh God. I am asking, O oh God, that you bless this word today. Now faith. Some people on this video are dealing with a right now situation. A right now circumstance. They need a right now God. There are some people that's dealing with some inner issues. Scars and wounds. 
hurt and pain. They need a right now God. So I am asking by the power of your Holy Spirit that while I am right here and they're right wherever they are, that you touch and know God and I act as an intercessor for them. That you may begin to move in their lives and whatever they've requested, let it be done in your will. I pray, oh God, that in the time that you teach them how to be patient and to trust you, even when they can't see you. I pray that they be still and listen to your voice. And I pray last but not least that you increase their faith. We speak healing, deliverance, comfort, peace, and restoration upon the lives of everyone watching this video. I look forward to a praise report out of this world for the next person on this video that's getting ready to walk into what you have called them to do. Somebody on this video is getting ready to receive some information and news that they have been praying for for quite some time. I see it, oh God, in the spirit. And I'm excited because I cannot wait for them to share the testimony because that's the kind of God we serve. Father, we give you all the praise. I pray that they sleep well tonight. Until we meet again on tomorrow night, be with us, watch over us, forgive us of all sins, O God, and cleanse us of all unrighteousness as we go forward in your work in the kingdom. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless each and every one of you. I love you all. I love you all. If you never don't hear anything else, I love you. Amen. With God's love. You can't say that you have love. Can't say that you have God and don't have love because God is love. So because I love you, I'm trusting and agreeing. We're going to keep praying every day until I hear some testimonies of what God is doing upon your life. God bless you, um, Devion Lynch. Amen. I want you to jump back on tomorrow because, brother, I see God doing something to you. I see a transition happening in your life. Amen. So you stay encouraged, Lynch, and um, I hope you get ba be able to get back on. To all my friends and family, there's so many of you that I can't thank you individually like I really want to, but share this video, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Amen. God bless you, Linda, and Lin Linda Linda Dudley, and Lindy Abars, and Angel. God bless. Okay, let me stop, because I'm going to start calling names. I love y'all. Stay strong, sleep well tonight, and pray for me. Bless you.